Well, let's start chapter two here. We're going to talk in this video about just what do we mean when we say SQL Server 2012. So what is SQL Server 2012? You can probably surmise from the title that this is a, a fairly intro level video. Give me just a second, though, before you jump forward, because I'll, I'll talk to you about it here in just a second here. Uh, this is the start of Chapter 2, and just to give you a little bit of an outline uh, of the chapter, uh, we're going to talk about what all the different components are. We're going to talk about the different types of database management systems out there. Uh, we'll talk about the different languages that we will work with, not only in this course, but that are part and parcel of SQL Server 2012. Uh, and then we get into, on the right-hand side, the what's new section. So we're going to just try to talk real quickly, a little bit high level, about what's new in each of the different pieces of SQL 2012. Okay. Now, this is version 11.0. Okay. So uh, even though we call it SQL Server 20,000, uh, 2012, it's actually version 11.0 if you look at the file versions, okay? Uh, this is mostly a, what I would consider an evolutionary release rather than a completely revolutionary. Uh, if you've been around SQL Server 2012, SQL Server 2005 was a revolutionary release. It changed a ton of things. Um, SQL Server 7.0 was a revolutionary release. SQL Server 2000 was an evolutionary release. That's kind of where we are in this case. By and large, things work the same way. You're still working with the same set of tools. Uh, but there are some new things, like we'll see user-defined server roles. We have sequence objects and lots of other things that we'll talk about a little bit later in this chapter. Now, there are some revolutionary areas of SQL Server 2012. Column store indexes absolutely would be, in my mind, considered revolutionary for the SQL Server space. Uh, the always-on availability groups are just mind-blowing uh, in terms of how, oh, thank you, oh, that's exactly how it should have always been. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy about those areas. But just from an overall standpoint, I think that this is an evolutionary release, which is great because it means we can build on that, right? We don't have to throw away all of our knowledge of what SQL Server 28, uh, 2008 was uh, and completely relearn everything. Right? Now, you can skip ahead. So like I said, this is a beginner section. This is a beginner video. What is SQL Server, right? Um, so if you already know what SQL Server is, it's totally cool to skip ahead to video number seven. In this one, that's the beginning of the What's New series. Um, if you already know the languages of SQL Server, that's cool too. Just go ahead. You can shut it off right now. You can go straight to video number seven, and you can just kind of focus on the What's New in SQL Server 2012 here. Okay? But for the rest of you, I'm assuming that you're wanting to know the basic components. You want to know what SQL Server is, what it does, the different types of database management systems, and all the other cool stuff here. All right, so let's get into it. This is a hard question. This is a much harder question than it probably should be, I think. Okay, So what is SQL Server? Okay, It is both a suite of software as well as a specific product within that suite of software. That's the highest level, okay? But we need to start there because we have to understand what somebody means when they say, I want to use SQL Server. Well, are they talking about that specific product within the suite or are they talking about the entire suite? Okay, so it's a little bit confusing here. Let's walk through the four components that make up SQL Server 2012. Okay, that's right. There are four components that make up SQL Server 2012. Component number one is called the database engine. This is your traditional product, SQL Server. So in the old days, in the 90s, gosh, wow, so far ago, in the 90s when somebody said, I want to use SQL Server, they didn't know this idea of the database engine. This was what SQL Server was. Okay, so SQL Server is an evolutionary product in itself. It started out as the database engine back in the 90s, back in 89, really. And then it evolved to add these other three parts. 
Right? So this is the original. This is what started it all. When you think of a database and you think of Microsoft SQL Server, this is what you're probably thinking of. Okay, so it is what is considered a relational, sorry, a relational database. Now we're going to talk about relational in an upcoming video, so I'm not going to get too detailed uh, about that. And then, in fact, the next uh, two videos, we're going to focus on the idea of what relational is and kind of how all this plays in together here. Right? But so here's how you can think about it for the time being. Anytime that you're thinking of tables, columns, and rows, you're thinking of the relational database side. You're thinking of the database engine. Okay? So if you're looking at a piece of a, of a particular problem and your solution involves tables, columns, and rows, you're going to likely be using the database engine. Okay? That's, for the time being, that's good enough. Okay? Uh, it also has XML data storage, so we can store XML documents in SQL Server in the relational engine, in the database engine. We can store, oh, XML fragments. We can also take tables, columns, and rows and convert them to XML as we take the data out of the database engine. Okay. We can also store files inside of SQL Server. These are called blobs, binary large objects. Okay, so binary large objects, blobs. Okay. We can also store clobs, which are character large objects, but you know, we only have so many bullet points that I can add uh, in here. Okay, so the database engine. Again, when you're thinking of storing data in SQL Server, this is probably what you're thinking of. And to be quite honest, most of the time when somebody says we use SQL Server, what they really mean is we use the database engine. Okay? All right. Now, the next one is integration services. Okay, so integration services, this is going to be abbreviated SSIS. All of these uh, guys will get this SSIS equals the SQL Server Integration Services. Okay, sometimes you'll see SQL Server IS. Okay, so the SS is for SQL Server. Integration Services is a data movement tool. It imports and it exports. That's its functionality. It's not a database. It's simply a tool to move data from point A to point B. That's oversimplifying it probably. Those of you who know what SSIS's capabilities are, you're like, oh, but it can do so much more. All right, but that's the main goal, right? The main goal is that it is a shuttle. It moves data from point A to point B, and it can transform that data. In fact, this ETL right here stands for extract because you're taking the data out of a source. You're going to transform the data you might need to convert two columns into one. You might concatenate first name and last name into full name, for example. So the source database has two columns, first name and last name. The destination has only one column, customer name. Okay, So you want to concatenate. You want to transform as you after your extraction. And then you will load that into a destination. Okay, It's a shuttle. Moves it moves the data from point A to point B. It's not a database. It's simply a migration tool, okay? Among other things. Just stay with me. That's good enough for now, okay? So SSIS. Now, reporting services down here. Reporting services would be the newest member of this family, and this came out, I think, 2002, 2003. Um, so we're like on the fourth iteration, I guess, at this point here. So this is SSRS. Let me just write that down here trying to pick out a color that will stand out against that yellow. But this is a centralized reporting server. Uh, we'll see some graphics coming up that uh, make this a little bit easier. But it's, it's two parts, really. It is both the ways you create the reports. It's also the ways you serve the reports to your users. Okay? I don't know of that many products that are like this. Um, maybe SharePoint is, is somewhat similar in, in terms of that functionality, but it includes both the user interface that you use to create the report, but it also is responsible for serving the reports themselves. Okay? Um, it may be better with a graphic, and, and I'll see you. Uh, I'll show that to you here uh, next up. Okay, analysis services down here. Let me zoom into that. This would be our SS, oops, sorry, my bad. This would be our SSAS, SQL Server Analysis Services. This 
is now a multi-dimensional database. So you remember the database engine was a relational. This is the multi-dimensional database. Reporting services, not a database. It's a report server. Integration services, not a database. It shuttles data from point A to point B. Okay? Analysis services is a database, but it's a specific type of database called a multi-dimensional. And like I said, I'll come back in the next videos, uh, next couple of videos, and we'll, we'll dig down a little deeper. It's kind of hard to... I mean, these are complex topics. I can't just explain them in 20 seconds, right? So that's the four products of SQL Server 2012. Um, and you'll be working with them. We're going to play with all of these throughout the course. Uh, they're really awesome. Um, the term SQL Server 2012 to me is confusing because what Microsoft's marketing department wants you to think is the entire suite. So with the, in other words, what I mean, when somebody says, hey, uh, do you use SQL Server 2012? What Microsoft's marketing department would like is for you to start immediately thinking of all four of those products. Well, what that person really means is, do I use analysis services, reporting services, integration services in the database engine? In reality, though, that's not how it works. Most people simply stick with that old school way of thinking, and they're just talking about the database engine. So when somebody says, hey, do you use SQL Server? What they're probably meaning is, are you using the relational storage engine? Are you using the database engine? They're not talking about analysis services or integration services or reporting services. In my experience, when most people who aren't absolute SQL nerds like me say, do you use SQL Server, they mean the database engine. You know why? Because if I wanted to know if you used analysis services, I would have said, do you use analysis services? Or if I wanted to know if you used reporting services, I would have said, do you use SQL Server reporting services or are you using SSRS? I would have been specific. If you just said SQL Server 2012, that's a generic and therefore, I'm thinking, okay, this person is really just using the database engine or just thinking of the database engine. Okay, kind of winding down here. The database engine and analysis services, those are the only two database management systems. This is a good acronym for you to know. Okay, I would suggest you, you definitely know this, and I've lost my pen. There it is. Okay, so DBMS, pay attention to this one. Oops, my pen is not tracking like I want it to. Okay, that's a good acronym. I will use that when I talk. I'll use that when I write. It's just a common thing that we all use. Database management system. We'll go into more depth on specifically what a database management is in the next video. Okay? Uh, the database engine, I've already said this, I'll just kind of wrap up. The database engine is what we would consider a relational database management system, whereas analysis services, SSAS, is multidimensional. Okay? And we'll talk again. I know I keep putting this off, but we'll talk about what relational is, what multidimensional is, what DBMSs are in the next two videos. Okay? So, like I said, more on these terms later. Okay? Now, reporting services, kind of saying the same thing. Um, SSIS, SSRS are not database management systems. They're just tools, right? SSIS is our ETL. Oh, wait, time out. You remember what ETL meant? Extract, transform, and load, right? Okay, so extract, transform, and load. And reporting services is only for reporting. It's not a database. It's just a report server. It does, however, put a relational database on the database engine, okay? All right, so let's just diagram these and we'll kind of be uh, pretty much done with this video. So here is our database engine. Okay. That's where all of our main databases are stored. This is where oh, you'll have your sales database, your human resources database, your products, your web storage. Okay. And over here, way to the other side, is our analysis services. And I'll just abbreviate that AS. Okay. Notice that it is a cube. Hmm, interesting. Multidimensional cube. Okay. Now, here is integration services down here. Notice that it's just, I put a little tool down here. The data goes, extracts the data from right from the database engine, transforms it, and it loads it into the cubes. Okay. It's just a data movement tool. Okay. Now, reporting services is up at the top. 
and it's just the report server. So we can make pie charts and bar charts and line charts against databases on the database engine or against analysis services. And among others, okay, those aren't the only data sources we could use, but that's kind of the interplay, if you will, between the products. Okay, got that? All right, and we'll play again with these. I love this. <laughs> I think I said it in the last video uh, at the end of chapter one. I always love finding awkward stock photos. <laughs> and this little kid, he looks so confused. And I can empathize with those of you who are looking at that last graphic or, or listening to this and thinking, what's the difference between the database engine and analysis services? I don't get it. They're both database systems. One's relational and one's multidimensional, but you aren't telling me what the difference is. I don't get it. And so I can imagine some confused looks if we were in a classroom. So let's start that process. Remember, I like to keep the videos here five to 20 minutes. So right now we're at about 16, 17 minutes, and I don't want to push it too much further. So I'll see you in the next video, and we'll talk about the different types of DBMSs.